Hello everyone and welcome to your favorite news show, Irongo Talk. Today we join you from Mierschach Park here in Wolfish Bay, which was recently refurbished by the Lions Club as well as the Rotary Club after it was vandalized by some graffiti artists. Now, as usual, we bring you the latest news, weather and tides. And then for our interview, we chat to Nelago Johannes, who tells us about the unmatched youth summer that is currently taking place at the MTC Dome in Swakopmund. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back after this. And here is your news. Now, the National Kurt Bomber Speaking Competition was held at DHPS recently, where young speakers from various Namibian schools impressed with their talents. Now, the grade 9 and 11 learners did not make it easy for the judges, who were Dr. Andreas Gotze, German Embassy Vintuk Naita Shono, Namibia Institute for Democracy, Erika von Wittersheim, who is a journalist and author, and Jako Rast, Hit Radio Namibia. Now, Gabriel Ritzhoff, DHPS, with the topic Trophy Hunting, Killing for Fun, impressed the judges in the grade 9 category making her the winner with Arik Blatt private school Swakopmund with the topic true product beauty ranking second and Kai Precht also from private school Swakopmund topic trophy hunting taking third spot congratulations to all the winners now secondly the youth should use every chance to enhance the potential to invest in developing opportunities especially the energy mining and logistics sector said Irongo governor Neville Andre at the start of the three-day unmatched youth summit in Swakopmund on Monday now about 200 youths from across Namibia are participating in the summit during which successful local entrepreneurs and other businessmen and women share their advice and experiences and allowing the youth the opportunity to test their ideas for possible future success now Andre said there are many challenges the youth face nowadays and this is an opportunity to help them overcome these challenges the summit is here to create an environment where we can expose them and teach them about world-class entrepreneurial thinking according to our definition of entrepreneurship and our mythology um, said Ilago Yo Nelago Johannes, who is facilitating the summit that is being held at the MTC Dome. When they walk away from here, I pray they feel better equipped to achieve their full potential and become enabled to realize their dreams. Now, you can head on over to our website, that's www.irongo.com.na. You can also send us your new steps, that's new steps at irongo.com.na. Please stay tuned for our interview. <music> Go far with Paratus. Go further with Paratus Fiber. Paratus, offering high-speed, reliable fiber connectivity, starting from only $599 Namibian dollars per month. Unlimit your lifestyle and visit na.paratus.africa for more information. Always prepare. What is this event called and the theme thereof? Okay, the Unmatched Youth Summit. Okay. It is unlocking your potential. Okay. Find yourself so that you can make an impact in the world because you can and you will. We are currently hosting a youth summit where we wanted to bring in the everyday young Namibian from all corners of Namibia, where we wanted to give them an opportunity to be heard, to find answers, to take accountability, but most importantly, to bridge the gap between the policymakers and the people that are in power.
empower and supposed to serve the community and the young people and the young people that truly need these opportunities because we believe that Namibia can go forward when we give opportunities and chances and moments to young people that want it and have the hunger for it. So we've actually tried to intentionally take from all over Namibia because we wanted to decentralize opportunities. We wanted to make sure that it's accessible to everyone. And the program includes speakers from all over that will be speaking, but most importantly, we will create a space where there's a Q&A session where the young people can ask. But then on the second day, because we did not want the everyday conference format, what we've seen and, and observed is that most of the times, instead of the conference having 20% mentors and 80% mentees, it somehow always looked like it's more 90% mentors and 10% mentees. How do people then grow if then the people that are in the room are already recycling what they know? So we created a stage where 80% or 90% are the mentees and then the 10% are the mentors. With that in mind, then on the second day, the format is where we are facilitating them. My facilitation is that they will be grouped into different groups where they are being asked questions about their problems. But because we don't want to raise a, a, a community or a nation of problem uh, complainers and all of that, with their problems, they will need to find solutions. And with these solutions, the best out of them will then present it on the third day. I would hope that they walk away knowing that they matter, they are seen, and they, their ideas need to be realized because they can and have the ability to change the trajectory of this country. Number two, I would pray that somewhere, somehow, also the people that have the power and the spaces and the ability to make their dreams come true, open the doors openly and wholeheartedly to ensure that the opportunities are availed because there's no point in people having a different mindset, new ideas coming alive and confidence, yet there are no opportunities. So I really do pray that it then creates a space where from both sides, with the young people and the policy makers and the people with the opportunities, we take accountability together, we take transparency together. And as a nation, we come together to create a space where innovation, initiative and most importantly um, hard work comes into play as a nation. I am the face of the event but I think it's a matter of coming from a place where I was really led by a strong team. As much as I am on the forefront of so many things, I'm not standing as a lone person. Number one, I have a team behind the scenes, especially MTC Dome. I would love to thank them. Most importantly, they've taken in so much work, financial burdens, and it just took so much energy and time. And we're so happy that the turnout was this great because really it would have hurt a lot after what we've spent time doing but most importantly as well I think is the young people we were lucky because we did not want to create a space where we are only speaking at a conference so before the conference we created a group where young people would actually engage and then after as well because we wanted to create a space where it's not just a one-time come here quick fix no good things take time good things take hard conversations good things take accountability and overall just continuous engaging so beforehand before the summit we created a group where there are so many young people some of them couldn't make it because they are from different regions hence we need the financial support for the next one so that we can transport them from all corners of namibia but um the young people as well because after their drive and their co the communication with them it gave us the energy so they've really also put in the work and the time so yeah we're very much happy to have had MTC Dome and of course uh, much as the young people all coming together to make it for themselves.
Welcome, so my name is Freddy. I am from Feeding Namibia. We started Feeding Namibia around four years ago, uh, supplying food to different kinds of uh, soup kitchens in Swakopmund um, and also a bit in Walfish Bay and so on. Two years ago, we approached the municipality to give us a, a earth uh, for to set up a fixed uh, feeding station, the first one in Swakopmund, where we can be able to send people to. And this year, two years later, 1st of February we got a mail from them to say that we got a piece of land where we can put up our first uh, fixed uh, station to feed children and um, so that's just a little bit about uh, how long this has been going on. Right here we have the launch of the site and um, so from today on we are hopefully gonna feed children as much as possible uh, most probably two times a week for now and then hopefully later uh, the more people get involved we would love to do it every day and with us we have a few partners um oh, quite a lot but the main one at the moment is uh, good food namibia so they put up for us a, um, a vegetable garden so we, we will be able to teach kids how to grow their own vegetables we have people we have a lot of people in in town that uh, made this possible um, as you can see there's a few like build it uh, amazing people we have eyeball construction geek for you um, oh, and there's there's a lot more that i can just share with you please feel free to contact me about any details if you want to know more um, and the main purpose is just to feed kids uh, we believe in, um, we have a saying of changing lives one meal at a time we have another organization working together with us one hope um, they give out little booklets um, we have books for um, for kindergarten kids primary school high school kids and where we can do classes with them so most of the times when we give food we also do something extra to teach the kids about life um, and yes that's almost i think that's for now so this is the first uh, major town if i can say that we have a fixed uh, station but we have many uh, there's there's been many towns that has asked us uh, this weekend uh, people from Uis um, asked us that we can do something there we have Pomaruru we have the whole name of Namibia and that's why we called it Feeding Namibia so we don't just want to be in one town we would love to do this exactly like this um, around Namibia and um, yeah so we have to to get into that space yeah so previously what we did we hooked up with a few soup kitchens in DRC and then on Deza um, and then when we got food or supplies we would take it to them on weekends most uh, especially uh, Saturdays um, yeah and we've built relationships with them um, so we take the food around 12 o'clock we know exactly how much it costs per kid so normally it fee we feed around two to three hundred kids per, per session and um, and that's how we've done it the last few years and um, but people uh, people would like us uh, people has asked us a lot of times if we, if we can't get a fixed place where we can send people to um, that is really that's a good place you know that we can send people to it's not a uh, how can I say a dodgy place <laughs> yeah yeah the last thing I would like to just say um, I'm so um, um, I'm so amazed by the, the fact that, and I think the mayor also said it today, that, that when people work together and we have a lot of hands together, like, and then something like this happens. Like, I have done almost nothing here by myself. Uh, no, I have done nothing by myself. The, the holes were digged by someone, uh, the wires were set up by someone, the container was sponsored by someone. Um, the water tank was sponsored by so and everyone just works together so um, i really believe the more people can work together in the community the the bigger impact we can have um, if everyone just does a little bit here and there if we all can just work together it's amazing that what what can be done and how many lives can be changed and that's all i think for now Okay, hi guys, I'm here at Feeding Namibia with Good Foods as well and we're going to feed some kids, a whole lot of kids that's going to be fed today. I'm so excited because my passion has been, since my journey with Miss World, my Beauty with a Purpose project has been food security for Namibia and sustainability for our country. So to me, I'm so excited to be here. I've been invited by Feeding Namibia to take part and be a guest today together with our mayor, with the Swakopmund mayor. So it was such a pleasure to be here. And I'm also focusing on my project, which is our water, my development, and making Namibia green, making the desert green. So this is all part of a country taking hands, because an African proverb says that if you want to go fast, you must go alone. But if you're going to want to go far, you must go together. So I just really believe in that, and I believe our country should stand together for the fact that we should become self-sustainable, self-sustainable during this trying time. So I just want to bless this whole project. It was beautiful to be part of it actually I really enjoyed it
Have you received a loan from NASFAF? NASFAF loan is the same as any other loan. It must be paid and settled. NASFAF has a set of guidelines on how you can repay your loan and become debt free. Therefore, it is important that you, a former beneficiary and a responsible Namibian, show your patriotism by helping pay back your loan and thus helping NASFAF become a revolving fund for the benefit of future potential students. By failing to pay back your NASFAF loan, you risk being blacklisted or having a court order against you. So arrange with the fund to pay back your loan today. For more information on how you can repay your loan, visit our website at www.nasfaf.na or visit our Facebook page or Twitter. Do the right thing and hashtag pay back the money. Platts Amir is a landmark on the coastline of Namibia, a home to quality shops and quality restaurants, a select variety of fashion and food retailers as well as banks, not to mention the pier with 36 luxury apartments and entertainment for the whole family. Find us at corner of Tavorite and Albatross Street, Vineta North, Swakamund. Call us on 064-462-242. Visit platsamir.com.na or at Platts Amir on Facebook. Platts Amir, enhancing your coastal experience experience. Unfortunately, that brings us to the end of today's episode of Irongo Talk, but you can always head on over to our website, that's www.irongo.com.na, that's www.irongo.com.na. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and on Instagram, or you can get in contact with us at 011-7040 on both WhatsApp and on Telegram. Please let us know who you would like to see on Irongo Talk or where you would like to see Irongo Talk. That's OW1 7040. You can also send us your news tips. Let us know what is happening in your town at newstips at irongo.com.na. Catch us online at oneup2.com. That's our online TV channel. Or if you're in the mood for some proper television, catch us on DSTV channel 285 or Go TV channel 94. Now, until next time, please keep, keep safe. Please keep warm. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.